happy you feel the team's place for round one, mate. Yeah, really strongly. Um, I saw it was nice just listen to Tom because I mean everyone goes through the same things. You all have you all feel like you have a really strong pre-season. Um, ours probably started a little earlier. We had what I was most pleased with our group was um, the amount of guys that just got together and trained through the whole off-season and and put in the work and train hard and work hard. And uh, I've seen some really solid grounds made by a lot of our young guys um, and some of our senior guys as well. But that's what excites me about coming into into some games now and. Uh, disappointing first hit out against Brisbane with a, with a few men down, but we had a really strong performance, especially first half against Port, but um, I guess that's a whole unknown. You, you train hard for the whole summer and then you come in against some opposition and um, yeah, that's where you're really tested. I don't think any other captains picked the Crows to make the finals. Um, what's your response to that? Well, that's fine. I mean, that's probably the position we've been in the last couple of years, but that doesn't change. Uh, what we're going after. What, what's the belief within the group? Around like where we'll... Finals. Yeah, so look, for us it's about constant improvement um, and we feel like we've made those gains this year and of course every team, that's what we play for. We want to make finals and, and play finals. So for us it's just been about how do we get better um, and what areas do we get better in um, and focusing on those those things first. Nixie's made some comments publicly about uh, people out there might underestimate us. Do you, do you think you can surprise some, some critics this season? Yeah, um, well, it's, I mean, whatever people think of us, so that's that's fine. I mean, we're, we'll go about our business as long as we're playing the style of footy that we want to play, and I reckon you, you guys got a glimpse of that towards the end of last year and uh, maybe saw half of it against Port, but if we can play that style of footy and that footy that we're really proud of, um, then we might surprise a few people. The building blocks there, Roy. Right? Like not so much learning the game plan of mixing now, but you actually know, everyone knows it's inherent and you're sort of a bit more comfortable. Yeah, and we've certainly got some games into some guys that we, we've needed to across the last couple of years as well. And I look at our squad, I think Jordan Butts, Harry Schoenberg, Sammy Berry, um, Lockie Scholl. Uh, there's a lot of guys that we've got a lot of game and experience into. Um, then we start to add in Jordan Dawson, get Wayne Miller back, who's, who's had a really solid summer and, and looking really fit and sharp. Matty Crouch. I mean, it's so nice to see him back out smiling, playing footy and doing what he loves best. So um, we're starting to add a little bit more experience around these young kids that have, that have had that exposure the last couple of years. How's the team navigated reintegrating Tex back into the group over summer? Yeah, fine. I mean, Tex has come back loud, vocal and as cheeky as ever. Um, and he's, for me, for, for him, I knew he was back when his leadership was there. And that's what's made him such a great footballer for our footy club for so long is his ability to drive the standard, to hold, a, hold others accountable to it, um, and just to train with that ruthless mentality, that's what I've seen from Tex all summer. And um, Yeah, as a whole group, we're, we're certainly back and we're enjoying him being back there. Did you address the group or the Indigenous boys about him coming back before he came back? No, I certainly had chats to everyone around um, Tex coming back in, including Tex. And, it's important to take in his feelings and, and everyone's feelings um, in this situation, but um, yeah, those chats always, I've always had. Josh Rochelle was uh, impressive on the weekend. What do you make of his performance and what do you think he can achieve this season? Yeah, the last, I mean, you guys have seen him play the last two weeks. His whole summer's been really impressive. Um, I think you might see a few of those soccer-like goals. I mean, he absolutely flushed one on the weekend that just shows his, his soccer ability. I'm not sure how much you guys know about his soccer ability, but he was, he was a pretty special soccer player as well. Chop, you must have known something about that, surely. Um, <laughs> but no, he's, uh, he's a very talented footballer, but um, again, with the guys like Tex, Elliot Himmelberg, um, big fog around him, um, Riley really playing some solid footy now as well. It's, he's just going to enjoy nipping around those guys. What do you think we can expect from Riley Fieldthorpe this year? I just missed that. What, for, what from Riley? Yeah. Do you want me to wait till the wind's gone down for you guys? Uh, or is that all right? Or? I think it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Um, I mean, Thorpe, he's worked so hard this whole summer and he really drives what we're about as a footy club and that's work hard and, and put others first. And um, his summer's been incredible, but. Oh, look, I just hope he can keep his body fit and, and stay on the park and, and play some footy for us because he's got such natural talent. 27 wins last year, 15th place finish. Does the win of 
win-loss matter to you as much as the growth and how you play the game? Uh, reflecting on last year, probably it, I was more impressed with just how we went about it. And that's, that's again, that's the, where the expectation comes in for this season. I, th I think we just have to start from where we left off last year and build on it. And I've seen us build on that all summer. And I'm, I feel like we're well and truly ahead of where we started last year, um, which again, I feel it's exciting, but it's a whole unknown when you come into to games and, um, and other opposition. You said um, a culture change in the last couple of years is with COVID has been one of the hardest things he's had to go through as a coach, rebuild the leads to coach. Can you just talk to us a little bit about the culture change and why it's helped the young group? Yeah, well, it's, it's provided us with opportunity too. And that's, um, you could look at it two ways, but the opportunity we had is in the, in the off season, most of us couldn't really travel too far. Um, so we had this great opportunity to be able to work hard together and train together. Um, so the whole off season we developed really close connection with each other but just got our training done and, and that allowed us to come into the start of pre-season really fit and firing. Corey, what's the, the, the one thing you want to be able to say most when you get to round 22 from a personal perspective of the year? Have we been proud of our last 20 games? Yeah. I think if I can ask myself that question and, and, and we can say yes and um, yeah, that would be a great way to reflect on the first 20 games. Jordan Dawson, you just touched on it. How's his progress? Yeah, good. I mean, he had a, a huge summer for us. Um, got all the way to the finish line and then and then just stumbled right at the end. But he uh, his pro progression's really good. He's, he's looking looking pretty sharp. Hopefully he's ready for round one because, yeah, but he's... not ruled out for round one? Uh, I don't think so. Not yet. Certainly not from him. Um, yeah, so he'll be itching to play round one because he's had a great summer. You uh, touched on Crouchy as well. Um, could you talk to us a bit about how much it lightens the load for you and, and how much I guess you'll have to step up and lead his sideline for a bit? Yeah, I mean, more importantly, it's just great for Matt. I mean, he's he's been in rehab and for those that have, I mean, been in rehab in their time, it gets really lonely and um, that's the most exciting thing. I saw Matt smile and just ready to play footy and just excited to play footy again. And that's that's been the best thing about the last couple of weeks. So for Matt, it's about going out there and just doing what he does best. and. Getting dirty, um, feeding that ball out to guys like Dawson and, and Wayne Miller and um, a few other of these young whippy kids. What about your own form? You've obviously had a couple of interrupted seasons. How are you feeling heading into this season? Yeah, really good. Um, yeah, a couple of eye injuries last year and a, a finger one that didn't really keep me out, but it's more the eye stuff that I had to get right. So, um, yeah, every pre-season I've, pre I've felt great coming into. Um, now again, it's just about performance of how we how we want to go about it as a group. Are you going to change? There's been some chatter that you spend more time forward and less in the midfield. Yeah, I mean, like every year, I think you aim to spend a bit more time on wing, forward, outside, and I think we've got the depth to do it as well this year. So with guys like Maddie coming back, Jordy Dawson, Benny Keys, um, yeah, we'll certainly rotate a little more. Last couple of years, obviously, Port's been very successful and roller coaster through your career. You sort of you've had great times, and now you're on the, the downtrend. Does it sting at all to see TJ and, and the mob across the road consistently playing prelims and be spoke about as grand finals? No, I mean, for us, it's always about what you can you you can control. Sorry, um, and exactly what you said. I mean, I've been part of some great years and some great footy and. For me, and I know for guys like Tex and Brody Smith, it's about how do we now provide this younger, younger group now with the same opportunity that we've had across our careers. Um, because we obviously want to be part of it, um, part of that success. And yeah, we want to help drive them to get there too. And I mean, speaking to Tex over the last couple of months, like we've had so much fun together over our whole careers. And, um, and that is riding the waves and the roller coaster too. But a lot of these times, um, like I remember my first couple of years when I first came in with Craigie, we sat sort of similar position on the ladder, but then we're able to launch and, and go from there. So that's the aim, it's to, it's to get these guys um, as far up the ladder as possible, as quick as they can, and hopefully we're a part of it. Does it feel like similar to that time? Yeah, very similar. I see these guys coming through together and um, I mean, Tex, myself, Danger, um, so many of those, so many guys. I look back at our career. We all came through at the same time together, and we're able to, to develop and really enjoy, I suppose, the whole journey together. So, 
that is certainly the message for some of our younger kids coming through. Well, I mean, Tex goes into this season without a guaranteed contract at the next. Do you think he's still got a good enough footy left in him to potentially earn that? Yeah, he did the same last season too. And um, what I've seen from Tex this summer um, suggests he's going to have another big season. Um, he's so important for us. His leadership up forward and the way he sets us up and the contest he provides, he's a big part of, it, of this footy club. And um, yeah, his performance is one thing, but his leadership as well, that's, that's the other part that's so important for this group is, um, I know myself as a skipper and um, for other leaders uh, in our leadership group, we need Tex around to, to be able to lean on at times and, um, and to be able to drive what we're really going after. Because as I've just mentioned before, he's got an unbelievable amount of experience that um, can certainly be used by these guys.